All right, everybody, let's prepare, um, center hearts and minds and prepare to enter into worship. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, you. with you. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into the kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Solomon said, you have shown great 
and steadfast love to your servant, my father, David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. be the firstborn within a large family. 
And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the disciples another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. We're going to talk about the, um, the, the Gospel lesson today. Um, and in just a minute, we get to hear my friend, my colleague, Pastor Lauren. He's going to talk about how the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. Have you ever, I know that you bake with grandma sometimes. Um, and I know you guys baked an, a pumpkin pie together for the pie auction. Do you ever bake bread? Well, if you know, do you know what yeast does when you use, when you make bread? If you put yeast in your bread, it makes your bread like bigger and it makes the dough kind of puff up. And that's, do, have you ever had warm bread? Like right out of the oven? It's so good, isn't it? What's your favorite thing to do with bread? Well, eat it, but like, do what do you like to put on it? Bread. Frosting on bread? What? <laughs> well, some people put Nutella on bread. I guess you could argue that that's like frosting. <laughs> bread and butter. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to show you. Um, I have this wonderful little book here. Um, 
It's called, guess what? Bread, bread, bread. And I'm going to share my screen with everybody and show you um, the pictures and read this book with you, okay? Because it shows some different kinds of bread. And we might be surprised. Um, bread was something that was very common in Jesus' day. Yeah, back in Jesus' time, um, one of the reasons that we have bread for Holy Communion is because bread was such a common uh, thing for people to have. Pretty much everyone had bread. Um, wine was also very common. And yet wine was also the drink of celebration. So we have bread and wine for Holy Communion. Um, bread, bread, bread. What has he got on his bread? Looks like peanut butter and jelly, huh? Do you like peanut butter and jelly? Yum. Yeah, it's good stuff. And there's a little girl in another country who has some bread. That's a flat bread. I don't think that bread has yeast in it. Flat bread doesn't have yeast. People eat bread all over the world. There are many kinds, many shapes, many sizes. Skinny bread, fat bread, round flat bread, bread with a hole. What does what is bread with a hole called? A donut or maybe a bagel, right? Yeah, yummy. Crunchy bread, lunchy bread, mmm, and bread to soak up your egg. Oh, yummy. That looks good. Oh, there's a oh pizza, what? Pizza and pretzel, they are bread too. Did you know that? Very cool, yummy. Oh, there's a family in another country having bread, rolls, bread on the table, bread on your head. Oh my gosh, that's how they carry their bread to their farmer's market in other parts of the world. Bread is good for you. Mmm, that looks like She's taking a big bite out of that loaf. It helps you grow. It makes you strong. Making bread, shaping bread, baking bread, toasting bread, mmm. Cooking bread over the fire. Tortillas are a kind of bread. Did you know that? Yeah, and they're yummy too, aren't they? I've seen people do that in Mexico. That's how they make tortillas over open fire like that. It's pretty cool and delicious. Fill up the basket. That person has a basket on their head again. And off to market. Bread for sale. There's a different ways of selling bread in the shop and at the farmer's market. Breaking bread together. We break bread together and we share a meal together. Um, and that's an important thing that we do, both at home with our families and friends and here at church. Um, we can't gather right now together in the church building, but we gather and we break bread together for Holy Communion too, don't we? And there's another picture of someone breaking bread. It says, have a bite, delicious. And that's our last picture, the little boy, very cute. So I invite you to think about this too, um, that in the Bible, the word um, that we, the Bible was written first in Greek. So the word for bread is artos. And artos means, means bread, it means loaf, but it also can just mean food. So when you hear the table prayer, the communion prayer today, think about that um, because it says something that at first sounds strange. We say, you'll hear me say, um, Jesus, you are our bread of life, our, oh, you are our table and our food. Let me just read that to you. I'm, I'm got our, yeah, holy God, our bread of life, our table and our food. So bread and food, it's the same word. Okay, give us this day our daily bread, our daily food, everything that we need for life. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your abundance and for the goodness of all that you've given us, um, for giving us daily bread, for giving us food and everything else that we need for life. 
Help us to have grateful hearts as we live each day and help us to share the gifts that you have given us, to share our bread with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so now I'm going to queue up um, for you. Um, our sermon, which is uh, Pastor Lauren from Maxburg Luther Church, and I think you'll enjoy him. I know I did. Hello, my name is Lauren Darst, and I am the pastor at Maxburg Lutheran Church, just in between Canby and Malala, Oregon. I'm so glad to be with you, whether you are from uh, Oak Grove United Methodist Church with Pastor Heather Riggs, or from Milwaukee Lutheran Church with Pastor Jesse Christofferson, or King of Kings Lutheran Church with Pastor Sharon Hughes, or from our uh, local partners, Zoher Lutheran Church and Pastor Michelle Manneke. I'm so glad that you are here and on behalf of those other congregations, welcome to you, especially if you are not connected to any of them and you just happen to find this broadcast randomly today. We are so glad that you are here. As we continue in a series on the book by Dr. Amy Jill Levine called Short Stories by Jesus. Now, you don't have to have been a part of this series so far. Each sermon stands alone, but they're all kind of connected to a similar theme. So don't worry if you've missed out on the first two. You can go back and find those sermons on, on our, uh, wherever you're watching this, you should be able to find those, um, those sermons on in the same spot. Um, and also, if you want to get this book, um, visit your favorite bookseller. And uh, this will supplement the messages, but you certainly don't need to use them or to read it. Um, these sermons come to you with scripture um, ready for you to digest and to experience. Um, and that will be certainly enough. But we just want to let you know that, that this book right here is, uh, is uh, available for you to buy and to be nourished by. Next week, uh, Pastor Heather Riggs will be bring the message. She will be preaching on the parable of Jesus, uh, the pearl of great price. I'm so looking forward to hearing from her and grateful for those who have preached already. Um, thank you for being here. So let's get started. We'll read the gospel lesson. Uh, if you are from uh, uh, certain traditions, uh, you may uh, want to stand for this. You certainly uh, don't have to, but know that you are welcome to stand as you desire, as you so uh, choose. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour, until all of it was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you all in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may have noticed that this is a very short verse. I don't know if my colleagues were trying to challenge me by giving me one verse to uh, to chew on for this message, or if they were just trying to make it easier on me, as you might think it's easier to preach on one verse. Well, the reality is that even though it's a small verse, it's really rich and deep. Of course, all of Jesus' parables are, if you take the time to sit with them and pay attention to context. And if you do, you'll see that as Pastor Michelle and Pastor Jesse have mentioned in weeks past, that context is really critical when we are looking at a story from the Bible, but especially when we're listening to the words of Jesus. Context is critically important, both to understand what they might have been experiencing and also how we hear it in different ways. So, the person listening to Jesus firsthand, the person who had the blessing to be able to hear those words out of his mouth, was probably thinking about yeast in different ways um, as Jesus said those words. And 
too. And in the same way, you may be thinking about yeast and how this fits into a parable and into a connection to the kingdom of heaven, uh, depending on your experience with it, whether you're a, a brewer or a bread maker or a, a winemaker, um, whatever the case may be, or whether, um, or, or whether you're aware of the microbiology of it all and you know that it's kind of actually kind of a gross little process by which um, yeast breaks down the different sugars and so forth in order to, to um, get the bread ready to be, the flour ready to be baked. Um, so uh, for myself, I'm not super experienced with bread, let alone, um, let alone the process uh, of making it. And, and Dr. Levine points out that the yeast that was used um, was probably less like those little packets that, that you use for certain types of bread, and probably more like a sourdough starter. Now, honestly, if I'm being honest, I had no awareness of what a sourdough starter was until this pandemic hit. And as we all began to spend more time in our homes uh, in a way that made us connect more uh, diligently online, we all began to see people getting fascinated and starting their own sourdough starters. I had never thought to look and to see what a sourdough starter looks like because I enjoy sourdough bread, but um, I'm, I'm not by nature a baker and the world is probably better for that. But I asked some of my, uh, I asked my Facebook friends, uh, hey, does anybody have a sourdough starter uh, that they could take a picture of to show me? And I'll be honest, uh, I'm kind of glad that I didn't know what this looked like before I fell in love with sourdough bread because um, if you are like me and you understand somewhat about the biological processes and so on and so forth, to see this is probably not the most um, taste-worthy thing, which for me, it was not. This is a sourdough starter from one of our own members, Donna, at Maxburg uh, Lutheran Church. And I look at that, and and you could have shown that to me without telling me it was a sourdough starter, and I just would not have seen the beauty in that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have seen the beauty in that. It just, uh, I, and and to be honest with you, it look, knowing what the process is to a certain degree and what it looks like, I imagine that it's kind of gross and gross smelling. And then uh, also, I wanted to show you. Um, uh, Deacon, uh, I believe Deacon Megan Hogstad, uh, a seminary friend um, from, uh, from my time in studying to become a pastor, she sent me a picture of this. Um, uh, it is her sourdough starter. And yeah, that one also, to me, doesn't look appetizing. It doesn't. And so I... I, I, I had misread Dr. Levine, and I thought that she said it has a terrible smell, and I went back and read, and it turns out I was wrong, but I had that in my, um, in, in my brain as I was thinking about this, and so I said, so is that really a kind of got an icky, stinky smell to it? And, and sure enough, um, multiple people came back and said, no, it's actually got quite a pleasant smell to it. It's, it's a very beautiful smell. Uh, in in some respects, I is no, I, I'm I'm exaggerating there. Nobody said it was beautiful, but they did say it was pleasant. So context matters, and I, I know that for me, um, trying to begin to understand that was important. Just like is it, it's important to understand how um, how yeast was seen and used in the Bible, and in the Bible it was seen um, in different ways. Sometimes it was seen as as um, as compromising, as creating impurity, and other times clearly it was seen as a beautiful gift that created this beautiful uh, nourishment for um, the people who um, who were uh, eating the loaves of bread. Think um, think of the Last Supper, or think of the feeding of the five thousand. Um, without that yeast that beautiful and needed nourishment wouldn't come to fruition. 
But let's take a closer look at this, uh, at some of the other stuff going on in this in this parable. And um, one thing to note when um, when the, our translation that most people are using this day, um, it says Jesus told them another parable: the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour. Um, and and actually. What um, a, a better translation, according to many people, including Dr. Levine, is uh, the the translation probably would have been better something like this. Similar to the kingdom of heaven is leaven that a woman taking hid in three measures of flour until was all leavened. It was, that's kind of a direct translation from the original language. Similar to the kingdom of heaven is leaven that a woman taking hid in three measures of flour until was leavened by all. And the key word here is hidden, or that I'm trying to, um, to bring into focus here. The key word is hid. She hid that. And the reason she translates it this way and, and why many other people argue that it should have been translated as hidden is because the original, um, the, the original language that the New Testament was written in, um, the word was in crypto. You can see there um, that that has roots connected to our word encryption, which kind of means hidden, and it can be better translated as hidden. So this woman, she, she hides the yeast and the flour. She hides it in the flour. And this creates something of a mysterious feel to it. Why was she hiding yeast in the flour? Why would Jesus use that term? That brings to mind mystery. It brings to mind unknown. It, it brings to mind, it could bring to mind trickery, but here it probably brings to mind kind of a surprise blessing. At least that's what it does to me. It shows the mystery. It tells us that, that there is something deeper going on than just a biological process and a, and a baking process. There is something else going on here. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that was hidden. Hmm. So, what might that have to do with anything? And what is this mystery that's unfolding? And, and how might we think about the kingdom of heaven in new ways when we think about the mysterious hidden yeast that's in this mixture? And I think about what we all know about yeast is that it essentially, it magnifies, it, it grows what it is placed into when you place it in with the flour. Yeast grows. And so, as Dr. Levine does, um, you think back to um, a connection earlier in Scripture, in the Hebrew Scriptures, um, in Genesis uh, 18, I believe it is, when, um, when Abraham and Sarah have just been told that that she's going to get pregnant and that he's going to be the, the father of multitudes and, um, and they don't believe it. And, and, all, and, and Abraham's outside of his tent and three, three men just kind of mysteriously show up. Um, they just, they're just all of a sudden, they're just, they're there. And, and this surprises Abraham and, and he, he does the thing that he's supposed to do. He's super hospitable. And he goes in and he asks Sarah to put together, um, I think it's three measures of flour. And this is connected also to the three measures that the woman is using of flour. Mm. There's a mystery there as well. Stay with me here, folks. There's a mystery there as well. Because this amount of flour and the amount of flour that Abraham asked Sarah to use is massive. It would be like me going and getting enough flour, um, three measures of flour would be like me going and, and making dozens of dozens 
of biscuits, of loaves of bread. I mean, it's, it's just an incredible amount of bread that is being made. So it doesn't make sense, but yet we're, we're kind of falling into or, or diving into this mysterious nature of, uh, of the parable that Jesus tells, like Jesus always does when he tells parables. We're not supposed to necessarily say X equals one and Y equals two. The parables are meant to excite our imagination, to, to help us think outside of the box and, and also to recognize that our God and what our God is doing and the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is greater than we can ever imagine. We can't wrap our minds around it, much like we can't wrap our heads, minds around how much flour that was. So back to this parable and what it might mean as we think about the mystery, the hidden nature of the yeast and the massive nature of the flour and the nourishment that it provides. Um, and as we think about how, if you really understand what's going on, it, it it's very earthy and, and maybe even in some ways icky, we begin to think about the kingdom of heaven breaking in in very real ways because that's how our lives go, isn't it? Our lives are sometimes beautiful in the mystery and we can see the multitudes of blessings and other times in the beginning, especially of a new phase or a new period, things are not as beautiful and they don't feel as wonderful. And sometimes they're, it feels like you're in the muck and especially at a time like this where we are in the midst of an ongoing global pandemic and the midst of ongoing national crises of, of, um, of all sorts of disagreements and polarization, um, of oppression, of people fighting for liberation. Um, the, the stuff of this world is not always beautiful on the surface. You can't always see it. And sometimes it feels like what is bubbling up, what is decomposing, what is what is hopefully coming into fruition is going to be something that's beautiful. But we have that promise that what God is doing is beautiful. Some of it may be hidden. Some of it we may not be able to see. But all of it is beautiful. All of it is gorgeous in the end. But also that's the whole point of that prayer we pray, many of us, every week. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. We're asking for it to unfold here and now so that the suffering might have relief, so that the oppressed might be liberated, so that, so that those who are lonely might find connection so that we who are experiencing grace now might take part in that hidden mystery of, of placing little hidden treasures in the midst of our daily work and life so that it might become something beautiful. Even if we don't know exactly what we're doing, even if we don't understand what it is that we've got our hands in, even if we don't understand the process or like the video I'm about ready to show you. We don't even understand why we're touching these things, but we can tell that there is joy. Now, watch this. As, um, as our friend, uh, as a member of Maxburg, Megan and her nephew Levi need some bread. Can you do your hands? Oh, yeah. Ugh. Good job. <laughs> oh yeah, that's nice. Especially nice when you give it a little grip. Oh, no, no, no. Mm. We're gonna cook it up before we eat. Notice the joy. Oh, that smells good. Give it another bread. squish. Give a squish. squish. Notice the curiosity. Ah. Good job. Nice. 
Notice that even as he takes a bite, he is helping this process along, even though he doesn't know anything about what it is. He knows he's helping. Good job. Thank you. Yay! Yay, indeed. See, he knew he was part of something. He didn't know exactly what was going on. His aunt was helping him grow, teaching him from a very young age the, the joy of creating something that will bring not only nourishment, but joy to others. That's a hidden moment of the kingdom of God in breaking especially at the end when he is feeling that joy. That's my hope and prayer for us in this coming week, that maybe in the coming days we look for little hidden mysteries or little hidden joys that maybe we can help cultivate, maybe we can help, um, help rise like the dough. Maybe, maybe it's something we can help um, help bake, help bring to fruition, so that others might experience that coming kingdom of heaven. Because Jesus tells us that's what it's like. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast hidden in flour by a woman who's doing stuff to create nourishment and to bring likely joy to those who eat. Imagine that smell. Maybe if you are celebrating communion today, think about that bread that you're getting ready to eat. It is a tiny little piece of bread typically, but the mysterious nature of it is that it is a massively spiritual meal. One that is meant to bring us joy closer to the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has loved you from the beginning, loves you in the middle of the muck and the mess and in the early stages of things that don't look pretty yet but will become beautiful maybe. No, they maybe don't look beautiful yet, but they certainly will become beautiful. So let that mystery resonate in you this week, dear friends. Look for those moments where you might notice the mysteries that are that are growing and fermenting, or maybe look for those opportunities for you to do that for others. And now, may God's love be with you today. May it grow in your heart in mysterious ways, in ways that make you even more beautiful than you already are, and in ways that your beauty then blesses the world. Amen. I invite you all to join in singing our um, hymn of the day, which is Neither Death Nor Life.
With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. We give thanks for the witness of your servant Luke, the evangelist, whom the church commemorates today, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. God of all, May your word of justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt, especially those on the prayer lists of Zor, and all other communities we, we call home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of truth, you show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justices, judges, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we lift up to you today Mel's friend Linda Hale, who's hospitalized, and we pray that her emergency gallbladder surgery today will go well, and that she may know your healing touch. Give her your peace and your strength. Give her doctors wisdom and compassion as they treat her. We also lift up Marie's Aunt Claire, who is going to be having a mastectomy in the coming week and quite possibly even a double mastectomy. We pray for wisdom and clarity for her surgeons in this time. We pray for peace and for healing for Aunt Claire. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Lord, we lift up to you uh, the family of Maxine, who passed away yesterday, especially her sister Madeline, and um, all the family, including our own beloved Ardith, who is her cousin. Lord, we ask you to be with her family in this time of sorrow. Give them your peace that passes all understanding, and comfort them with the promise of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as you raised Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you. We give thanks for their witness, confident of your rescuing welcome for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also today lift up our friends in Poland and we pray for them as they um, are being ravaged by COVID and they're, they've lost several pastors in the Lutheran church there and bishops. Be with them, bring your healing touch, give wisdom to all as we navigate this virus. Give wisdom to us here too, as we in the United States are facing a great spike and give us also your wisdom and your peace and help us to look with eyes of love at our neighbor. Give us your discernment as we prepare to vote in the election that's coming in the next couple weeks. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. One, two, three. 
May the peace of Christ be with you always. Okay. Well, friends, this is our time um, to ponder our offering um, in thanksgiving to God for all that has all that God has first given us. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, holy God, mighty and immortal, through Christ our Lord, who by his death and resurrection is making all things new. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and you fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet table where Christ gives himself as food and drink. Now join us in singing Children of the Heavenly Father.
So may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst. Guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.